my friends from all over the world. Today we have another show of hemp engineering. My name is Ramon Granados and we are broadcasting from Perth, Australia. Today we have the great pleasure of having Mr. Chipepe Heita. He is the co-chairman of the Cannabis and Hemp Association of Namibia in Southern Africa. He is also a Bachelor of Science in Commerce Finance and Risk Management. Um, I'll tell you, Chipepe, that this is a common uh, background because I do have uh, expertise, a solid expertise in risk, risk management within my engineering degrees. Yeah. Welcome to Hemp Engineering, my brother. Thank you very much for having me, Mr. Raymond. I, I appreciate you having me on your platform and yeah, can't wait for the, the, the questioning ahead and what lies in the future. Oh my brother, what can I tell you? If our, our common bond is hemp, our passion is hemp, and our dream to make a better world is hemp. Chipepe, tell us how did you end up in the hemp business? Well, uh, I would say if I, if I had to put a date on when my journey started, it would be, I would say early 2018. Um, I was in the process of trying to find an exit strategy from uh, my general nine to five from the workforce. I was working in um, pension fund industry and insurance. Um, so I don't know, after two years of, of two years, three years of, of, of working, I was looking for greener pastures, so to speak, and just looking for something that resonated more with my passions and what I'm interested in. Um, so probably three months after that, three months of doing research and just and just trying to scope out what, what I'd find passionate about, I stumbled across him. Um, obviously having having uh, had personal experiences myself with CBD oils and having seen um, hemp clothing in, in, in real life and having been able to touch it, I, I, it immediately clicked a light bulb in my head that, okay, this, this could possibly be something that, that I could pursue till retirement and beyond and probably, probably pass on to the, the future generations, which is one of my main aims of trying to better my own community here and then obviously Africa at large. So yeah, so having a, a, a farming background as well, um, it, it all just clicked together that perhaps perhaps this is, this is something. And you know, always at the start of your journey, sometimes you have some, you have some um, curious, curiosity on whether you're in the right industry, but then there's always, there's always a divine intervention that can somehow help you to push you on to be like, okay, you are, I'm on the right path. Um, hemp has a, it's a particular plant, very yeah. peculiar. And it, when it resonates within you, she finds the path for you. And that's yes. the way it is. It's a magical plant. You yes. said, Pepe, uh, Pepe, this, um, we uh, are bringing you as a featured speaker for the Hemp African Summit, which will be happening in July. And there are a lot of expectations, personal expectations from my side, and primarily because I am Latino. Uh, we Latinos have a, yeah. a mix of our own Aboriginals, white Europeans, and Black Africans that were yeah. brought during the colonization. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we, are, we are part of you and you are part of us. And, and I do believe that this um, um, summit uh, can bring to the opportunity to many people such as yourself to, mm -hmm. to uh, become more united in common yes. goals. Mm -hmm. What are your what are your expectations in, on 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 this regards on the in the Hemp African Summit? 
Yeah, so um, I know I've mentioned it uh, plenty of times to you before, um, but it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt to mention it again how honored I am that you've uh, selected me, almost headhunted me to, to be a part of the summit. So I really appreciate that, firstly. And secondly, what uh, the, the idea that I got from the Hemp African Summit, like you said, an idea of, of inclusivity, of trying to get Africans, whether it's just Southern and Northern, to get to a common goal. Um, I wanted the I want the summit to bring um, important stakeholders, uh, decision makers, uh, people that have social um, major social impacts on their communities and their countries, um, to to come together and to corroborate on on a way to educate the people on the plant, uh, whether it's to divert off the stigma number one or to just um, promote the benefits and how it can how it can bolster e economies at scale and how it can uh, increase um, import and export trade and so forth. So my expectations are, are nearly as high as yours for the Hemp African Summit. I'm looking forward to meeting um, other uh, pioneers and, and advocates with a common goal within their countries and find out what what sort of uh, social stigmas they're dealing with or whether it's political stigmas or what obstacles they're going through and how we can move forward in, in um, get, bypassing that and overcoming those obstacles to, to just set up a, a African, one, one for all African sort of um, common goal, which would help us move a lot faster. Um. And must congratulate you because I know how difficult it is for expressing these kind of um, thoughts um, yeah. in an emerging industry such as ours. I want to reinforce uh, your thinking uh, that our decision makers should follow the path of what the United States, the, the one that implemented the prohibition, is now dismantling very yeah. rapidly uh, these uh, rapid. treatments. Yes, there is no time for, yeah. for my thinking that uh, uh, for mm -hmm. third world countries to simply uh, legalize what we need to legalize and start allowing mm -hmm. uh, the capital investments so that we can bring the technologies that we need to yes. uh, solve the problems with this plan. This plant is the solution for everything. Um, yes. Having, having said that, Giuseppe, what would you tell your decision makers in your country and or in Africa in general? Um, so I, I, I like it. I like to look at this thing from a, a first principle perspective. So, from if I have to give just just a just to be frank statement, it's. Number one, it's it, it's a plant. It's a natural plant that uses a a god natural systems of growing. It doesn't grow different from any other plant. Agreed. Obviously, it grows much better than most plants, but it doesn't grow differently from any other plant for it to be prohibited. So, the, my main point of um, especially for our local decision makers, um, their focus is. Uh, on big oil discoveries and green hydrogen. For me, uh, um, for me being just a, a regular citizen here and watching from afar, it's almost a far-fetched um, long-term implementation of what they're trying to do. Yeah. And with him, yeah. we, we would have three or four growing cycles yearly. So implementation would be much faster than whether it be oil discoveries or, or green hydrogen. Really? And uh, mm -hmm. where the world is going now with in terms of, of trying to get to net zero with carbon emissions and whatnot, it's very counterintuitive with, with the oil discoveries and hemp can produce what they are looking for in terms of the biofuels or yes. whether it's sustainable <laughs> aviation fuel or, or yeah, it just, it just all the types of fuels that they're looking to get from 
from the big oil discoveries. Um, and it's, it's a lot more socially inclusive. I mean, uh, with all those um, big discoveries that they have, it's not very, it's not very um, citizen inclusive. It's very top down perspective from the government and they sort of select who mm -hmm. they're trying to add. But if we were to implement our infrastructure here, we could include from the smallest communities, if I had to give an example of just RDP housing, low cost housing and all that stuff, that's, that's something that we could uh, include people just on a small rural farm and make it community based and people can feed themselves, they can heal themselves, they can build their own houses. And all we're doing is moderating and regulating and, and having compliance. And another big thing for for Africa, we can we can also be a manufacturing powerhouse in terms oh, yeah. of obviously obviously America having a twelve thousand year or China India having twelve thousand years history, we're sort of still at the same at the same. There's still that eighty year gap from the 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 legislation change in nineteen thirty seven. Yes. yes. So so it's not like we're very far behind. We can catch up if. It's it's a it's just a matter of skill share. It's a matter of um, of sharing manufacturing properties and and so forth. And I am very sure that with the uh, support from Hemp Engineering, we can do marvelous in, the, in your country. I want to tell you something, Pepe. Yeah. Uh, Costa Rica is a very small country. Mm -hmm. um, they decided that they wanted to be the light of the eco movement. Yeah. When I learned from you that, that your country, Namibia, it's got the same size of Venezuela, almost 900,000 yeah. square kilometers, which is- Yeah, fantastic. almost 900,000. Yeah, and what's the population of Venezuela? Uh, 30 million. And you have two million yeah, we, people. Two and, and, two and a half. <laughs> Kibebe, bear with me. It is so, with the proper poli political decisions, and you're yes. absolutely right, we can accelerate uh, an implementation of the infrastructure to be, to make your country independent from oil, from food. Yes from textile, mm -hmm. you name it. From textiles, uh, you name it. I'm going to tell you another thing before we finish our interview. Paraguay okay. is a country in South America. Two years ago, that country decided that hemp uh, would be the, a national priority for yeah. them to develop their country. Um, yeah. They started from zero two years ago, zero hectares grown. And right now they're growing over 3,000 and a half hectares. Hectic. In two in years, less, that's, that's impressive. In less than two years, basically, brother. When there is a political will, everything can happen. But that country yeah. realized that hemp is the solution for their challenges. And with the proper support they heard and the proper guidance, they're taking the proper yeah. actions. And your country yeah. has the proper timing to do so. Chipepe, you can count with hemp engineering and my person as Ramon Granados for anything that you yeah. guys need. Anything, my brother. Yeah, I I am so grateful. I'm uh it's, it's it's almost like a like a blur that how far i've gotten this far but i i completely appreciate your support and your help and surely with anything that uh that i need with regards to what we're trying to do in terms of being self-sustainable um uh saluting the sustainable development goals how hemp i think there's how many of them 17 hemp attacks, it defeats almost 14 of the 17 oh, yes. uh, SDG goals. Yeah, so 
it's it's almost a no brainer that they have to take this on, but the the hesitancy is is the hesitancy is 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 a, is a major problem. But it's it's a small obstacle that we're going to overcome. It's just a matter of of time. We need to bring them and invite them to the Hemp African Summit <laughs> and welcome them. And we're going to bring light to their understanding because yeah. we all can win out of this. This is a win-win situation. It's like you said, this is not a top-down that they decide we who's going to make rich here is from the farmers up. Yeah. And we can create what, what is my dream, a green circular yeah. economy. That's what we're after. Mm -hmm. My brother, thank you very much for yeah, your no, time. I look forward to it. I can't wait. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Roman. Bye.